So now let's talk in this lecture about some leadership basics. There's a lot to learn about leadership. Be something that you probably work on for your whole career, trying to understand and become good at it. But let's talk about a few basics. First of all, if you think about it, leadership is really the ability to influence others, employees, to gather and use and communicate information to each other about what's going on and what needs to happen, and then to work hard at meeting the organization's goals. So getting a framing and understanding and gathering information and getting people to organize that and direct that so that they move towards the organizational goals and change those goals as time passing. Some tips, you want to build effective and responsive interpersonal relationships, good fact exchange, constructive, positive, but at the same time, honest feedback about what's going on, communicate effectively in person, writing, in print, emails, etc. so people understand what's expected and they have the reaction you want them to have with respect to moving the organization forward. Build the team and enable employees to collaborate effectively with each other in positive directions and to put their heads down and work hard when necessary. To understand the financial aspects of the business, how to drive profits, improve efficiency, find new markets, those sorts of things how to create the kind of environment where people feel very positive about what they're doing. So they want to come to work, they want to work hard, they want to achieve objectives, they have high morale, they have recognition for what is that they've done and what they've succeeded at. You typically want to lead by example, by being the best example of what you think someone in the organization should be doing on all of these fronts and help others grow and develop while all that is happening. Those are the kinds of things that a leader needs to do. That's a sort of a general description. The real problem is figuring out what to do and formulating plans on how to do it and then following through and making all of that happen. There's different styles of leadership, three types perhaps you might say. There's many different ways to think about this, but it, and so the word choice is not that important, but you generally have organizations that are centered around a leader. That's an autocratic leader. All the decisions are made by one person. They tell others what to do and how to do it. Then you have participatory leaders that listen to others, try to get the consensus view forward, make decisions when they have to, but involve everyone so they feel invested in the decisions. And further down the path, is uh, free reign leaders, which basically say people know what they need to do, they understand what they're trying to accomplish, leave them alone, they work hard, they get the job done. Um, depends a lot. Sometimes each of these styles may be needed, even though you're not comfortable being autocratic. Sometimes it's necessary. Likewise, when everyone is professional and they know what to do, being too autocratic could actually reduce productivity. So moving through all of these is necessary is one of the real skills that one learns when you become proficient at this thing we call leadership. One of the things that's currently being studied a lot and is important because it makes people believe in what you're saying and what you're doing and want to follow you is this idea of authenticity and how it affects leadership. It's not the same as the other styles. You can be authentic and be autocratic, you can be authentic and be participatory, you can be autocratic, I mean, you could be authentic and be free reign, where people just sort of watch what you're doing and you're so authentic, so into it and passionate and believe in what you're doing and it comes from the heart uh, that people wanna follow you. It really did, is about being, understanding what you're trying to accomplish and throwing yourself in it full steam ahead. And people will follow that and they can follow that. People want to follow that because you believe strongly in what you're doing. Kim Jordan is an example from New Belgium Brewing Company, is someone who is often called authentic in what he is doing as a leader. Howard Schultz, CFO of 
of Starbucks has great human relations skills and inherent leadership ability. He's honed over the years. He's passionate about his business and he's de demonstrated his ability to relate to others and care about others. Of course, Starbucks is well known for its success, but also under his leadership, Starbucks decided to offer health insurance even to part-time workers. He's long paid higher wages than other similar type stores, but in this case, he also wants to pay health care to part-timers, which makes people more invested in the company and better with the customers looking out for the business. When employees are provided with the ability to take responsibility and make decisions and move the organization towards its objective through their own initiative and their own hard work, that's called employee empower empowerment. It doesn't mean that managers aren't needed. Companies that have participative cultures, corporate cultures, have been found to, to, to benefit because employees feel like they're taking an active role in the firm's success. They're invested in the firm's success. Leaders who wish to empower employees adopt systems that support the employee's ability to provide input and feedback into decisions. It allows employees to be encouraged to participate in the decision making and coming up with ideas and initiatives. Managers should also be trained in ways that empower employees to make their decisions along the guidelines that the company is trying to accomplish. Guiding employees in challenging situations so that the right decision is made by the people who are right there close to the, close to the action and, make, and know how to, to act and how to take the company forward because they understand what the company is trying to do, its mission, its strategy, and its objectives. Another important area of leadership is leadership on the ground or in teams and work groups. This is a, a, it's an important because it means that in, on a certain level, everybody has to be acting as a leader. In today's business world, decisions are made by teams. This is becoming the norm. Teamwork has often been an effective way to encourage employees and, bring, and give them power, empowerment by allowing the team to make decisions and move forward. Although decision-making in teams is collective, the most effective teams are those in which all the employees are, are encouraged to contribute their ideas and their recommendations. Teams often result in innovative ideas or decisions that wouldn't have been made by only one or two people because of so many perspectives are being discussed. However, truly empowering employees in, empowering employees in team decision-making can be difficult. It's quite common for more outspoken employees to, to dominate the team or to, for there to be groupthink where everyone sort of follows the same pathway, whatever comes first, they follow. So being effective in teams can be quite difficult. Bringing up uh, on ideas that aren't necessarily the consensus or the challenge, the assumptions can be difficult. Training employees on how to listen to one another how to challenge other people's assumptions in a constructive way, provide relevant feedback. All of this can help pre prevent some of these common challenges. Another way is to rotate the team leader so that no one person becomes dominant among the team. Team leadership, acting as a leader in teams are one of the important early skills in developing a successful business career. Something to really focus on learning how to do well. The next lecture, we'll talk about how decision making is structured and how to learn how to become a good decision maker in business.